depending on where you're watching us from. So it is 2 p.m. here in the UK. So nice early 10 a.m. over in America. Um, I hope you're, no, it's not, it's 9 a.m., sorry. Hope you're having a lovely morning and I hope you're having a great day doing whatever you are, whether it's crafting, prepping for Christmas or just having a lovely, lazy Saturday morning. So yeah, absolutely brilliant. Now this is our starter skill show and we're gonna be focusing on card stock. So we're gonna take it all back to basics. This is all an educational show. So this might be card stock that you're looking at on our website or it might be card stock that you've already got and you're thinking I never touched that it's gathering dust it makes an excellent doorstop but that's not quite what I bought it for I bought it to use and between myself but mostly my lovely friend Jan who we're going to speak to in just one minute are going to show you how you can use that card stock and really get the most of um, out of it so you know they cost us a pretty penny so let's make sure we use them so Jan are you ready to talk cardstock I certainly am I've chosen sort of my six top card that is sort of like used all the time and you hear us talking about it when we're demoing you may or may not have got it in your own stash it might be one of your favorites but we're going to go through all the different ones and their uses for the uh, the starter skills show today right well the first one we're going to start with here we're going to look at multi-purpose cardstock lovely white cardstock and our Jan's going to tell you all about it Right, so our multi-purpose card then, um, we give it that name for a reason because it does so many different things. It comes in A4 and A3 and I'm going to use the A4 uh, piece of it today to work with. Nice, smooth, non-coated cardstock and again, if you have card in your stash that is called stamping card, it's exactly the same card, but we renamed it because it does so many different things. So for example, at 300 GSM, it is more than weighty enough to actually make your card blanks, blanks from it, okay? It also die cuts beautifully. So again, you can see there against my, my top there, that lovely intricate die cut so it will go through all your machines and die cuts beautifully it also embosses beautifully so I've actually just run that one through one of our 3d embossing folders you can then add things to it absolutely beautiful and because it's a smooth surface you can use it with some of your coloring mediums as well we'll talk about that a little later but what I'm actually going to do to it this morning is one of my favorite things to do and that's actually bring in some of our inks and ink blue blending on here because you have such a smooth surface is a really nice thing to do. So I've just brought some of our water reactive ink today. I'm going to take a piece of scrap card. I'm going to load up my applicator with that lovely water reactive ink and this one is crushed velvet. And then I'm just going to use the piece of scrap card as a sort of a stopper and add. You can see how beautifully that sort of goes onto the card. And then I'm literally just going to move the card stock scrap around bring it round here to create like a, almost like a, a sunbeam effect, but just by bringing that ink into each one, you're gonna get a slightly heavier bit towards the bottom, and it's gonna create that lovely sort of way of, 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 whoops, just holding it tight in there. So again, taking this all the way down your card, all right, I'm just gonna move it one more time. You get the idea of what I'm doing there, okay. So you can see how that's coming on there. We've got that into that line. And then literally, just tidy that up a little bit there. And you'd carry this on all the way around, just moving your piece of card all the way around. And then if I just move that to one side there, pop those away and just bring in that finished example of what you can actually do with these. You can see there how we've created, I've actually gone the other way with that one, it's this way, and just created that kind of sunburst effect. But because you've got that lovely smooth surface of that white, uh, that white multi-purpose card, it really does give a fantastic effect there. So that one's white multi-purpose card available in A4 and A3 sizes really really useful I love that technique but 
um, a multi-purpose card. It can be used for our card bases, as you can see here. So we've got construction. I've got my easel card here, so I'm using it on there. I've got it here for my um, scrapbook pages. As we said, it embosses and it can make boxes. And oops, that's your multi-purpose card. Really, really useful. So there we go. That was a really quick overview, but I think you can see it's definitely going to be one of your staples that you can get, use. I mean, absolutely brilliant way, as you're showing, you know, jam show just one colour, but you can apply multiple colours of your inks on there. You know, and the fact that your boxes are going to be so robust, I just love it. It's just one of those um, that you're going to use all the time. And I think what Jan said is absolutely key. That's why we've renamed it from stamping card to multi-purpose, because people are like, well, it's a stamping card. Why am I using it to emboss or, you know, ink? So it's brilliant. Now, we have so many of you with us. So it's our lovely Chloe on socials today. But watching us, we've got Lisa from Minnesota. We have got Alison from Brooklyn. Fazia says, so looking forward to seeing Jan and Corin. We're glad you, to have you with us. Um, Thea says, hoi hoi, everyone just finished a baby card. Bet you use your multi-purpose card on that. Zoe Carver says good afternoon, everyone from West Sussex. Melanie D says hello again, all. Thank you for joining us for the second show. We've got Lynn, who is also known as Go Live Granny. I love that. From Isle of Wight. Rachel, good afternoon, crafty peep. Samantha, good morning, everyone. She must be in America. Um, happy Saturday. Oh, Melanie loves this technique. Um, Jan. So we had Kirsty D on early. Remember, she said she was making soap. Oh, yes. She said her house is smelling I like a fruit salad. She's done lemon, lovely. orange, strawberry <gasps> and cherry soaps. Wow. She's got Christmas ones to do next, Christmas spice, Christmas pudding and Christmas tree. Oh, can you do it, I, Do you know, I'm just imagining the smell now. I that bet it smells smells amazing. delicious, I bet, yeah. yeah. Absolutely fantastic. Oh, can you imagine going in a shower with a Christmas spice soap and the whole room, the steam? Yeah, how beautiful is that? Patch says, I love that technique, Jan, but the multi-purpose card is out of stock. Could I use Nina card to try this? Now, we are going to get the stock in. What we're trying to do is show you tips and techniques for all of the products. I know some of you will already have your multi-purpose. The multi-purpose will be back in stock. But there's a difference, isn't there? The construction of the card. The, the fibres in your multi-purpose are quite short. And so when you put your ink on, it doesn't travel. It stays where you put it, which we're going to look at the Nina and the Nina, the construction of a Nina card is very different, isn't it? I think just the weights as well, Corinne. So I always choose the, um, the multi-purpose because of its weight at 300 GSM. The Nina card stock is um, only 216 GSM. So there's more chance of when you're using your applicator, actually buckling the card. And like Corinne says, it does sit differently. It's not impossible. You can do it, but for the optimum sort of effect, I would be working with that cardstock. And like um, Corinne's just said, you know, the, the, the stock is constantly being replenished. It just depends when it arrives in the warehouse. So, uh, so don't worry. If for anything, if, if a product is ever out of stock, there's a little um, box that you can click on our website that says that it will email you when, you when it's back in stock. So if you have an email account and you use email, tick the little box, and then once it comes back in stock, we will automatically send you an email email to say it's arrived in the warehouse and it's back in stock. But it would have been such a shame not to have included multi-purpose in this show when we're talking about all of the different card stocks. So I know it's out of stock. I know that can be frustrating, but this is sort of your... Well, it's your crew. This, this is the top of my list. list. Well, this top is all about of, yeah. your um, different card stocks. So that will teach me, won't it? I, so did, I did this one first because it's the one I use most. Yeah. You yeah. know, it's called multi-purpose for a reason. Um, you can see all the different things that you could do with it. And that's why I actually came to that one first because it's the one I reach for the most uh, when I'm crafting it definitely without a doubt right are you all right over I there think I've really got it back together I've nearly got it back together <laughs> let me just put this on I'm just going to put my watercolor card up. I saw our Charlotte making this so pretty and I've just messed it all up completely hopefully that's nearly <laughs> if anybody's looking it, it looks nearly right there we go I didn't knock my cup of tea over that's the main thing that's the main thing oh. 
Apparently, I can make that a bit straighter. I can make that a bit straighter. That's it. There you go. Right, there we go. Oh, dear. There's some picky people about... Right. Now, I think that leads me perfectly into the next card stop, that last question, because we're going to look at our Nina card stock next. So this is our Nina card stock, and Jan is going to show you how to use it. So again, this time we're going to go to my second pick, which is the Nina Classic Crest card. So another smooth surface card stock. But the, the way that this differs to our first choice of the multi-purpose is that it's a lot thinner. So at 216 GSM, it's much thinner than the first one was at 300. So not as suitable for making things like card blanks. It will die cut. If I'm using this, I often die cut it twice and stick them together to give it a bit more stability but the one that this is perfect for and what I'm going to demo for you today is actually for using your um, alcohol markers it's sort of premium cardstock for doing the alcohol coloring with so what I've done is I've taken a piece of the Nina card and I've actually stamped out uh, anything doesn't matter what it is I've just picked a floral one for this purpose and as always with alcohol markers I'm just going to pop a piece underneath and then just take whatever colors you fancy and add your colour to the actual cardstock. So bearing in mind that I've stamped with an alcohol proof ink on the line art to make sure that that doesn't bleed, we can now add that colour into our design and you'll find that it just glides over the top. Because you want to blend your alcohol markers, you want a cardstock that it's not going to uh, seep into the card itself. So just by having a nice smooth surface like this, it makes it the perfect cardstock for you to actually start popping your alcohol colouring. So if, this is, if you like the alcohol markers, this one's a staple, an absolute staple to have in. And again, I've picked cardstock that I use on a regular basis you'll see when we're demoing that you know we're talking about all the different types of card but you can see how well that ink sort of sits on there and if you've reached the saturation point of the card you should always be able to see this is normal on the back it should not seep all the way through but you will see it actually starting to dry into the card stock there so again add the colors that you choose that you think will actually uh, do the job and when you finish you can just see how well those colors blend onto that nice smooth surface and of course that is on your Nina classic crest cardstock an absolute staple there I think is your Nina now as um, Jan says if you are using it as a base here what we've done here is we've stamped onto it and then colored with our pens we've used it as a matte layer rather than the actual card itself and then you get the right the, the right um, sort of weight different ways to colour and then you, you're perfectly using your Nina cardstock. There we go. Aren't those absolutely gorgeous? Lots of lovely different ways. I'm going to show you one as well. Don't they take your inks beautifully? And that's because as we were saying it's a different construction you've got the longer fibers so that ink can travel down those fibers and then it will blend if you've got a short fibered cardstock the ink stops where you put it with this it travels and it leaves you to uh, allows you rather to do the blending so who else has joined us let's have a look where did i get up to there we go kathy my says hello from mrs missouri um evelyn says good morning from a beautiful colorado wow cynthia is oh in a rainy texas really enjoying these starter shows hopefully um cynthia you know, you're going to pick up hints and tips and techniques all the way through with these. Joanne says, I just love these shows. I've gone, I've done so much shopping the last day. Such wonderful deals. Pat says, thank you, Corinne and Jan, for your helpful explanation about the cardstock. Well, we haven't finished yet, Pat. We've got four more to do, I think. I think yep. we have. Barbara says, hello, everyone. I love this session. Learning so much and I've been creating cards for a while. We all do. I love doing the shows with Jan just because I pick up tips and techniques, but don't tell her that. And then um, Rhonda says, good morning to everyone. All my wonderful crafty friends out there crafting and chatting today. That's what I love. The fact that 
uh, we only get fed a few of the comments, but there are even more comments coming through um, socials that we don't get to see. You just chat amongst yourself, which is brilliant. And Joanne says, I learned so much from these shows. So absolutely fantastic. And I'm really, really glad to have everybody on board. Are you ready to show us the next one, Jan? Are you ready? Yep. OK, yep. so not that one. Not that one. We're going to... So you see it all wobble? Oh. I think like, yeah. They went... Oh. They were it's waiting like when, for it to like fall when you used over. To build those, you used to build those towers with the playing cards. The playing cards, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, you always got to the last one and the whole thing crumbled. <laughs> yeah, that's often how I feel. Card stock. There we go. We're now... We're going to look at watercolour card stock. And Jan is going to show you some wonderful techniques using this. OK, so we've got watercolour card this time, and this differs quite a lot from the tooth that I've shown you previously. So watercolour card is made specifically for watercolour mediums. So things like inks, things like your aqua markers or pencils, anything that you're going to apply water to. So again, I'm just going to take a piece of that cardstock. I've actually got... Um, just a piece cut ready and I've actually got my tricolour aquas here which are a water-based colouring pen all right and I'm just going to do a little technique for you and then I've got a couple of examples of other things that you can do with it as well so all I'm going to do is take and this is just a piece of plastic from I call them poly pockets the little pocket that you put your documents yeah. inside I've just cut it open and I've actually got a piece that will work with my card and what I'm going to do is I'm just going to take three colours at random and scribble them onto my piece of plastic so we'll have a bit of green and we'll have a little bit of that lovely amber orange colour. So just where you want them on your card. And then I've got some water in a cup with my little pipette. And I'm literally going to drop it just into one or two places on the card there where I want that design to go. And then turn this over and place it onto that card. Now, because we've got watercolour card here, it's made to play with all these watercolour products. So you can spread this out and create your own backgrounds. And then when we remove that, you can see how it's laid that colour down. So again, you can move it about. I would bring my heat tool out at this point and actually dry this. And then you've got that as a background to do things over. So this one's actually a little bit more vivid. I use different colours here, but you can see uh, how I've incorporated that as a background and then just stamped over the top of it. So again, just giving you an idea of what to do. But also don't forget, it might be to do your washed backgrounds there. It could be, you can actually stamp with the watercolour onto the watercolour card and you can actually you've seen me do this, the technique with the glycerin uh, with the pens to actually make it into like an ink so just a few examples of how to use that beautiful watercolour card wow that is amazing completely different techniques we've got here we've got some sort of faux stamping with this one here so you've got your no line stamping we have used our watercolor um, cardstock so that you can color with it we have stamped on there and then we've made a background on our watercolor cardstock and all the different ways you can be using your cardstock what you've got at home absolutely fantastic i I just love that. That blew my mind seeing you do that. <laughs> I have never, never seen that. And I love that how you've made the background, but then you can stamp on top of it. It's almost like the start, isn't it? It's you just, could stamp on it. Yeah. You could put it through an embossing folder. You could die cut your flowers out of it. Just because it's watercolour card doesn't mean it doesn't die cut. Yeah. So again, it will go through all your machines. It's the same weight as the multi-purpose card. It's just that for things like alcohol markers, definitely a no-no. It's far too absorbent. It would yes. suck up the it would, you wouldn't be it? able to blend it yeah. same as blending like I did on the first demo with your inks the cardstock's very absorbent on a watercolour card so it would just soak you, you I'm not saying you can't do it it would use so much of your product that you'd be constantly renewing things so yeah has a purpose in that army of core, what I call core card stocks yeah, yeah. that background that you made would look lovely if you'd cut out um, what I call a skeletal um, 
die cut you know like a flower where yes. you've just got the outlines or a butterfly yeah. and then you put that behind it so you just see all those colors popping through absolutely look yeah. brilliant yeah. now i've got a question uh -huh. for you and um, this is from lisa she says what's the best cardstock to use for the puzzle die i know what i would say but a lot, because the, I think most of the puzzle dies are multimedia dies, yes. if I remember rightly. So therefore, you want something that's quite substantial. Now we actually launched um, a pack of mount board when we launched the jigsaw, the puzzle dies. So if you have a look on the website, I haven't brought the mount board with me today because it is more of a, a multimedia sort of. Um, product rather than the card mm. stock but yeah those dies because they're multimedia if they're brown in color as opposed to the usual silver that you see in our die range then they are multimedia which means they will cut through thicker components so the mount board is beautiful and from the point of view of using it as a jigsaw it works great now if you don't have access to that you could actually be looking at if it's the multimedia die and it's a brown colored metal you could actually be sticking a couple of sheets of the multi-purpose card together or maybe even three of them and those dies would still cut through the idea being that as a jigsaw puzzle if you're going to use it as a puzzle it needs to be robust enough to be taken apart and put back together and taken apart again so yeah the, the actual thicker materials work better and you can work on the mount board you can do whatever you want on top of it just like you can the card stocks yeah thank you that's really really useful lots more um, comments coming through and we can have a look at those in a few minutes while we're whizzing through that that's three of our card stocks we've got through i think it is and we've got three more to go so we can have a look at we'll have time to hopefully to have a look at some more samples as well but we're going to now look at something that we gave you a little bit of a sneak peek earlier so this is the matte black cardstock and again Jan's going to show you some brilliant techniques using this. Right, so this time we've got that gorgeous matte black. So this was number four on my list. So again, a nice weight, 300 GSM. So it is perfect for making things like your card blanks. So if you want to make a card blank with it, it will stand alone. It's perfect again for doing that die cutting. I've used the same die all the way through. And it's perfect for doing the embossing. It's also great for construction as well. So box making frames, things like that. But just as a quick demo today, and this is a favorite with the black cardstock we're going to pop a pre-cut piece and I've just cut this from a piece of A4 pop it into my uh, embossing folder and this can be any embossing folder this just happens to be a 3D lacy one I'm going to bring in my midi because they go straight through the midi with no extra shims and then we're going to bring out the old gilding wax so absolutely transforms that black card now I'm just going to grab one of my uh, gilding waxes from down here take this out and whereas you can't see much of the design while it's black let's bring out that silver gilding wax and just highlight some of that design for you so the minute that you start to put the mm. gilding wax on here this card just sort of comes to life it's the perfect carrier for the gilding wax you can blend your waxes as well so it might just not want to be one color I've just got the silver one out here, but you could start and blend the gold into it. But you can just see how that beautiful lace design from the embossing folder there has come to life. And then you can use these as backgrounds for your cards and then work on top of them with a the design. So you could add, you know, your floral aspects, you could add your sentiments to it. And the beauty of the embossing fold, uh, of the uh, gilding wax there, is how, it, how well it highlights that, um, that effect. So you can just see there where we've got that design. And if I hold you that up now so that you can see a little bit better, absolutely beautiful. And then I'm just gonna give it a buff as well because the gilding wax actually works well just with a soft cloth. If you just buff it, it just brings up that sort of shimmery nature of the, uh, the actual gilding polish there, the wax. So again, just to have a look at how well that's changed a matte card to something really nice and shimmery. And then again, if I just grab the one from earlier, just to show you, this was done with the bronzy color. This is the kind of thing that you can achieve as your card. So that's our matte black card stock. 
And as Jan said, she alluded to the fact that it's perfect for construction. Look at this, we've got little drawers, we've got little booklets, we've even made frames on here. Now, this is before we started adding any of our mediums to it. It's a perfect card for that. Now, I just wanted to show you, it isn't about using one card in isolation. I was past this sample. So you look at this and you think, oh, this is a box. So we've used our matte black card for the top and the bottom, perfect box making. But look at this. This is then the multi-purpose cardstock to make this quadruple frame in there. So just remember your cardstocks and mix and match your cardstocks around to make the bit that works for you. You know, and then, you know, you can be bringing in your metallic pens. You could be bringing in your Midas inks with that black cardstock. They would all look brilliant. And then if we look at that, I want to show you this, how robust this is for construction. See if I can get it the right way round. Look at this, we've centered this little book with the black card and this is really really strong a couple of layers of the card and then just use the right adhesive i'd be using my um solvent based glue our all-purpose glue and i think that would be brilliant for that and that would just make a lovely little um gift so i think we've got some more comments um, stephanie says corin i think jan could hear you when you said don't tell it yeah and i knew she could i knew she could yeah uh, mary beth says great to see jan again i love watching her demos she i learned so much I'm sure everybody does uh, we've got Cheryl Smith saying, hello ladies, enjoying the show. Don't think I've ever watched Jan without learning some kind of little trick. Great job, both of you. Oh, so Lisa's come, Lisa's come back, said, thank you, but will mount board go through a printer? But you don't need it to, do you? No, no. Uh, under normal stuff, you mean to actually get your photo, photo on there, on, don't yeah. you? Yeah, normally what we would suggest is that you actually put your photo onto either a suitable paper or you can print onto things like tissue and things like that and then adhere it to the mount board before yeah. you use your dye. Let it dry. That's really important to let whatever you've stuck it on with dry and then use your dye. Otherwise, it's sort of, um, if the fibres are still damp in your photo that you've stuck on, it doesn't dye cut properly. You'll end up with a bit of a, uh, bit of a jump mess in yeah. there so yeah make sure it's nice and dry and then you can run both of those pieces through your machine with the dye and get your jigsaw pieces yeah. I, I do that if I'm, if I'm ever coming here to demo I will show sticking the picture on the mount board but I'll actually have one that I stuck yeah. on at least yesterday yeah because obviously if the glue's wet the pressure of your die cutting machine the the top layer could just effectively just Absolutely. slide straight off couldn't yeah. it so it's the same with anything um there's lots of times we stick things together and then die cut them. I would always say give them a good few hours, um, whether it's your mount board or whether Jan was saying, you know, using a couple of layers of your... Um, yeah multi-purpose cardstock to use for your for your jigsaw dies always give them plenty of time to dry to make sure that they don't just slide one off the other when you you know when you come to die cut them uh kathy Myers says is jan showing black cardstock yes that was our matte black cardstock i think she was, i'm not sure why she asked that question because yeah, I'm not sure whether it was being funny or... Yeah, that's the one we've just done, yeah, isn't it? Yeah, that's the one yeah. we've just done. With the so, yeah. wax, yeah. wasn't quite, quite sure, that one. So, yeah, lots more people joining these. Christine says, hi there, everyone. Um, happy to see Jan again, says Ruth. Absolutely brilliant to have you on. Please, please, please keep bringing your comments through. And it would be lovely to have your questions as well. Because this is what these are all about, these creative cravings. I mean, if we can answer any questions that you might have, um, which card, for this one particularly, which cardstock to use, or even which cardstock not to use. So like Jan was saying, don't try and use your inks on your watercolour cardstock, because if you've got multipurpose or you've got your Nina, they are going to be so much better. I've used a dauber on... Um, watercolour cardstock and you feel like you're dragging it don't you it just drinks up any yeah. moisture because that's what it's made to do yeah. yeah so it's hard work what you want to do if you're ink blending or if you're using um, alcohol markers is you want the ink to stay on top of the card so that it can move about and blend um, anything that's going to suck up that moisture you're just fighting a losing battle and the majority of time when I was teaching um, when I worked at the store as a lot of you know and I was teaching people would sort of suggest that they were no good 
at doing something. I can't ink blend or I can't do this and I can't do that. 99% of the time it's because the product wasn't right. You've often heard me talk about being fit for purpose. It's about getting the cardstock, the ink, whatever it is you're using, they want to play nicely together. For example, I wouldn't stamp in uh, an alcohol-based ink to then colour it in with alcohol markers because it's going to start to move the line art. They need to be opposites. Um, so you want a waterproof ink to go with your alcohol markers. So it's about having the right equipment and the right product. Then you get the easy bit. It makes you look really good. And on that, if you are at all unsure about your ink pads, 17th of December, it's a Saturday, I'm going to do a 101 all about ink pads. Fabulous. We're going to be looking yep. at waterproof, water reactive, um, alcohol proof, opaques, metallics. Yeah. Yeah, I'm doing Have them you got the all. new ones as well? Of the, course I've got the, the new pill ones. ones. I'm actually not doing those on there because the next day, oh. no, at the end of that week, I'm doing uh, Craft Along with the Shimmer Ink Pads. Oh, I've not managed to get my hands on them Haven't yet. I'm, like, I'm itching. My Have fingers you? are itching to get yeah, hold of them. There's absolutely. a pile of them sat here, actually, right at the side of me. So if you can't find them later, it wasn't me. It wasn't you. <laughs> it wasn't you. It wasn't me. If your bag happens to be on the floor and they fall off, just like I knocked all the cardstock off, yeah, we wouldn't say. Absolutely. <laughs> oh, brilliant. So, yeah, so absolutely fantastic and I think Jan's saying that fit for purpose they play nicely yeah. together is absolutely key because that's what you want you want you know it's often we all say it's user error but we have so much cardstock and I think some people worry about not knowing what it is but once you've had the multi-purpose the Nina and the waterproof and you've had them in you can actually once you st once you've learned them as soon as you pick them up, you can tell yep. which they are. Nina is so smooth that you will know straight away if you've got Nina in your hand. It feels, I always refer, it's almost like baby powder, isn't it? Yeah. You've got that feel. Obviously, your watercolour cardstock is slightly pitted um, to take the water. And I mean, if you tried to add water to your multi-purpose and then did something over the top, all you're going to do is you're going to buff off layers of the cardstock. It's going to shred. That's not going to happen with your watercolour cardstock. You will soon learn them, as soon as you touch them, which ones are which. I've got all of mine laid up together on the shelf, but I know as soon as I pick them up that I've picked up the right one. And it's just it's trial and error. It's just learning the products, isn't it, Jan? It's, it's, it's like it's, anything else. You know, if you were learning another trade, you'd make sure you knew the basics before you went on to do anything with it. So this is just the same about learning. And this is why we've brought these core shows in for you, just for anybody. Lots of people just starting out on their crafting journeys. You know, you think it's a bit of cardstock Jan come on but they do all have different purposes you they know do. and if you've got that purpose right then you can get on and enjoy the crafting instead of having results that you're not happy with and then end up going in the bin because it doesn't look right it takes all that stress out of it and that's why we've brought you this show today to just go through the best uses for each of those different types of card yep Myra says good afternoon everyone listening rather than watching trying to tidy stock up apologies if I missed any messages well, you're going to miss seeing all the wonderful images if you're not watching, but I'm glad you're listening because you can still pick up lots of things. I actually have films on in the background when I'm crafting and then I suddenly realise I don't know what any of the characters look like because I've not looked at them. <laughs> oh, Tess says she's looking forward to that session. Might be the ink pads or it might be the shimmer ink pads, I'm yep. not sure. And Stephanie, very nice message, thank you. Stephanie says, I'm enjoying Jan and Corinne together today. So much knowledge being passed between the two. Love their tops, looking fabulous. Well, it's Christmas, isn't it? Look, it's it's Christmas there, kisses. Isn't it? Yeah. You've, got to, you've got to get there it's ready for there. Christmas and Jan's got her sparkly snowflake. So, yeah, there we go. Oh, Anne, I haven't read this yet. I have, oh no, oh this one's a hard one. Anne says, I have an idea for play your crafts right game. How Ooh. about identify the presenter by their hands? Oh, come on, give me a chance, Anne. Give, it's a good one, but my nails, I have the same pattern on my nails all the time. But like our Debbie Robinson, she changes her nail design. I suppose that depends on how much attention you pay to jewellery and things, yes. doesn't it? Yeah, yeah, I'd be able to spot Debbie's hands even without a nail. Is it the jewellery? I know what she wears, yeah. yeah. I do that. Sometimes I've watched yeah. things back with hands and I've got, oh, yes, that's me because that's my watch or yeah. that's my bracelet or my wedding ring or something like that. Yeah. If I get any further than my hands, mine's a dead giveaway when the ink appears. <laughs> yeah. They know it's me there, don't yeah. you? <laughs> 
It depends how much of the hands I can show. Yeah, I just have to yeah. put my fingertips in shot like that. <laughs> but, that's, but there we go. That's, yeah. We need those ideas. Please keep them coming in. Oh, Joanne says, all of my orders are starting to come. It's so exciting. It's like Christmas every day. Oh, it is, isn't day. it, when that box arrives. That's, my husband says to me, he says, your job is like having Christmas every, every day, day of the week, isn't yeah. it? Because have you found can... yourself having to explain to the DPD man yet, Corinne, that you actually work for the company? Oh, I, I, I did, because they were coming so regularly. I must have thought, my gosh, this woman's got a problem. <laughs> so I actually had to explain for him that I do work for the company and the products are coming for my work. He's like, yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't know whether he believed me or not. <laughs> yes. Before I started here, all the products that I, for my, the last company were, came by Royal Mail. Yeah. And uh, I was on such good terms with the postman. He, <laughs> and he used to know which envelopes they were because it was like, please don't take it back to the sorting office if I'm not in because yeah. I really, really need to. <laughs> and they used to know, to the point where the postman used to come and he used to knock on the door <laughs> and he'd give me a parcel he went, but can I use your toilet? <laughs> <laughs> oh, dear. Yeah. There we go, there we are. Right, OK. Now, we're going to look at craft cardstock next. This is really exciting. So, Jan, craft cardstock, please. Right, so next one on the list then is the craft cardstock. And as anybody that knows me knows that this is one of my favourites. I use this a lot. Now it's actually quite different to some of the other cardstocks in the, the nature that it's it's made, it's quite fibrous. So it's got a different sort of makeup than some of the smoother cardstocks. Reasonably smooth surface, but not as smooth as such as your uh, multi-purpose. But again, 300 GSM, just under 300 GSM makes it ideal for making your card blanks. So again, I'm going to go through those uses for it. I've just put a, a lighter piece to show you the actual die cut there again. So it's the same die cut all the way through. All those card stocks will do that die cutting and embossing beautifully. And then I'm actually going to pop a piece of that through the um, embossing folder again. But this time, I'm going to do that letter press technique. So I've brought in some ink again, water reactive ink, and you're actually looking for the side of the embossing folder that's recessed. And then I like to use my brayer to actually apply the ink, but you can go direct to the ink pad, uh, for the ink pad to your folder. But I'm literally just going to spread some of the ink out inside the folder. And this is the side that's got those recessed elements to it. If you put it on the other side, when we put in our piece of cardstock, it's going to appear on the back. If you put it on this side, it's going to appear underneath. So again, I'm going to pop it through here. I'm going to fold it together. Try not to move it, Jan, when you pop it in there. I'm going to bring in that midi again because it's so simple with the embossing folder. Pop it through there. And again, what it does is, as well as emboss, it's taking that ink just going to grab that little bit there and again it transfers the ink into the cardstock so you can just see into the background there where we've got the ink but you've got this beautiful sculpting that pushes through very similar to the one that I did at home okay and then obviously this because the inks are water-based it will all just clean straight off your folder and not actually be a problem but that was actually the technique that I wanted to show you on that beautiful craft cardstock but it can be used for so much more and i went searching for these i wanted to show you look at this we've used our craft cardstock here to make these gorgeous little um gift boxes here doesn't it take the ink beautifully we've used it here for uh, a box and i know that's a blog post we have die cut it it die cuts beautifully and then takes our gilding waxes on here we've used it for mats and layers and also for construction so, so what a useful card i think it's probably one of the most underrated in our craft stash is our craft card but look at this look at that just a little bit of color and then are the gold um, matte layer as a drop shadow looks beautiful and again look at this construction weight here now the one thing that i think jan people need to know with craft card is adhesive you need a good adhesive with craft card, don't you? Because it's fibrous. Um, well, I would go down the same route, to be honest. If I'm working with wet glue, cardstock to cardstock is always the all purpose glue. Yeah. Always. Um, if I was sticking it to something like glitter card, 
I would probably go with the PVA, the um, tacky glue, because yeah. you need it to soak into that glitter card. Um, if all else fails and you're not sure, the good old red line tape works a treat on it as well. Yeah. Yes, yeah, so if you're not into wet glues, both the tape runner and the red line tape would work equally well yeah. with it, yeah. Yeah, I've but just you're done right, them. those fibres do soak it up a bit more than they the do. smooth surface cards, yeah. don't they? Yeah. Yeah, they can you can sometimes just need a little bit more glue than you might otherwise yeah. need. Just because, like I say, it's got so much more a um, bit more fibrous. Now, I was busting with this, what this comment came through, and I couldn't you were showing us the technique and I couldn't um, say any more. June Woodhouse, she's put a comment on and she said, Oh dear. I came home with a puppy today. <laughs> uh, June, don't leave it there. What have you got? What have you called it? And where's the pictures? What have you got? That's the breed. Yeah, that's what I meant by what have you got? It's a dog, yeah. What have you got? A breed, sorry. I want to know more. I, want, I, and I, I need a picture. So please, and then our Chloe will send it through. But please let us see. You lucky, lucky thing. Oh, that is brilliant. Now, Kendall says, what size are each of the cardstocks? Now, in the UK, I'm not sure where Kendall is, whether you're UK, US or somewhere else. All of the cardstocks that we've shown you so far today have all been A4. Now, A4 is slightly different to the US letter size, so I'm not sure where you are, but comparable, it's US letter size, more or less. We have looked at some A3, but not just this show. We looked at some A3 in the last show. So what we've looked at so far has all been A4, which is eight and a quarter inches by nine, 11 and three quarters, Jen? Just about, yeah. Just about. So eight and a quarter width by 11. I always say 11 and three quarters, and then that's eyelash because it's just that silly little bit over 11 and three quarters. Whoever designed it, I don't know. I believe in the US it's eight and a half inches by 11. Yeah. I may be wrong there, but I think it's slightly shorter, but just a little bit wider. Yeah. So you can do very similar things with yeah. it. And then, of course, your A3 is the equivalent of two pieces of A4 together so you've got to if you cut it in half you'd get two lots of a4 yeah. Yeah. but if you're buying anything from our website today if it unless it says otherwise it's a4 yeah. which is eight and a quarter by 11 and three quarter inches yeah. so there we go okay so joanne says that is so funny our postman comes here so often he knows if he sees my husband's truck to deliver it to my neighbor's <laughs> house oh, i could get in so much trouble because i have too many packages coming <laughs> i mean What's the definition of too many packages? It could be for Christmas. You might have won a prize. Who's, how's your husband to know? There we go. Um, Anne says, which side of craft card is the right side? Is it just personal preference? Why is it like that? Let me just grab a piece. Yep. But yes, you're absolutely right. I need two pieces to show this. And I'm going to get our Jan to... Oh, uh oh. I'm going to get our Jan to tell us if she's got any choice. But can you see that? That's the two different sides to yeah. our crab card. This one is a lot, lot warmer, and this one is a lot more rustic. Yeah. Well, I yeah. tell you up, Jan, would you like to explain? <laughs> Absolutely no right or wrong whatsoever. It is, you're right, quite right, it is pure preference. I think it's something to do with what they make the card from. So the actual pulp that they make it from, it obviously dries differently on the different sides. I personally prefer the slightly warmer side or the darker side, but it depends what you're doing with it. It depends what your end product wants to be. Um, for the doing the technique that I just did, I use that warmer side. I tend to think of the paler side as the reverse, but like I said, there's no right or wrong with it it works equally as well if you were doing it die cutting or inking etc if you flip it over and you prefer that slightly paler side so that's probably the beauty of that one because some card stocks it looks different on the back so yeah absolutely whichever way you prefer right okay i'm nearly sorted there we go <laughs> she's <laughs> rebuilt her house of cards again oh dear me i'm gonna knock it over again they should have I? had them all flat on the desk for you shouldn't they curry <laughs> The stress is they put, <laughs> introduce it, read the iPad and don't knock over the cardstock, you know. <laughs> they, yeah, they, yeah they, they didn't put that bit in, you know, when they've got it's a because we're so expressive, isn't it? And it's we talk with our hands and whack off it goes. <laughs> That's what it's been every time. It's because I've been talking with my hands. You're in good company because Ben always knocks it over as well. 
Oh dear, okay, let's go quickly with the last ones of these comments. So we've got Joanne says, wow, that's a great technique with the embossing and ink. I'm going to have to try this, and this is why I love watching this show. Thank you, Joanne. A uh, different Joanne, uh, Olivienza says, hi everyone, love learning new te techniques, thank you, ladies. Stephanie says, wonderful um, samples. And Pamela says, well, thanks, Jan and Corinne. This has been a good learning session. Never knew about craft cardstock. Thank you so much. Well, that's what we're hoping to do. I know for some people it feels like we're going a little bit back to basics, but there's always something new to learn. And like I say, I love doing shows with Jan because I'm always learning stuff. I'm always watching and seeing how she does. Even if it's just things like inking around the edges of cut cardstock. I do it a lot more since watching some of her <laughs> demos because you do get that lovely, clean, look so our final cardstock is our Centura Pearl Snow White this time we're looking at our hint of silver so Jan hint of silver so this is our Centura Pearl then, okay? So we're working with that A4 size again, and we're gonna concentrate, like Corinne said, on the hint of silver, but I've just brought both of the colors. Again, just to give you, there is a slight difference in the hint of silver and the hint of gold. Now we had a look at this earlier, but I'm gonna have a look at the silver one for now. So beautiful pearlized finish on this, coated card, so you can just see that shimmer under the studio lights here. And what I'm gonna do, again, I've got that die cut just to show you, you know, Centura Pill cuts like butter through the die cutting machines. Regardless of whether it's a Gemini or any other machine, it is beautiful to die cut with. And we'll make your card blanks again. I'm actually going to come back. I know I've concentrated a lot on the embossing folders this morning, but they are some good techniques. So again, I'm bringing that embossing folder back that we've just had the blue ink in, believe it or not. And I'm going to pop a piece of that cut Centura Pearl with the nice pearlescent side facing up. And again, I'm going to pass it through the machine. Now, I'm going to add ink to this again, but I'm going to do it in a slightly different way. Uh, so we're actually going to use a stencil brush this time, and it's a much more sort of gentle finish. So again, pop that out of the way, bring that out, and again, just show you that gorgeous, just look at that detail on there. You can see all that beautiful sculpting. You know, that might be it. That might be the background to your card. If you're making a nice sort of maybe a wedding card or an engagement, might just be like that. But what I'm actually going to do is bring that ink back in that I've just been using. And I'm going to bring one of my stencil brushes in and literally load up the stencil brush. And this time, I'm just going to brush it gently. And a lot of people are not aware or may not be aware that your Centura Pearl, even though it's a coated cardstock, will take the ink and it dries pretty much straight away it's not particularly stays wet for very long and this is actually our water reactive ink and again just by brushing it over in all different directions you've got a slightly different look to what we did previously with the Centura Pearls. If I just move that to one side now and just have a look, you can just see how it's taken on that hue of the ink there. Um, the one that I did earlier is pretty much the same, a little bit paler on the one. That one still looks quite uh, pale blue, but that one's taken that ink beautifully. And then again, you've got your backgrounds with that Centura Pearl. This is the one that we did earlier where we applied the ink with a, an, a sponge applicator and then just chopped it up to make our background. But again, you know, when you've got something as pretty as that, add a sentiment, maybe a little bow or something, you've got your card blank. So that's our Centura Pearl with a hint of silver. Absolutely fantastic. But as, as well as embossing, Centura Pearl being so strong, being the 310 GSM works brilliantly for your construction, whether it's your boxes, whether your frames, whether it's your other frames, or whether it's your mats and layers like that. So absolutely perfect. Now, we've only touched on Centura Pearl today in the Snow White, the hint of silver and the hint of gold. Centura Pearl will come in lots of different colours. Oh, that was a good timing. I can see Jan's got hers. Now, this one has been used as a card base here. So this is Centura Pearl. This is the ivory. So you can see it looks brilliant. So Centura Pearl comes in so many colours. And I think Jan's got just an example of a... 
a fraction of the colours just a handful I just I had a look at what I got on my shelf and just pulled out some of the colours but it comes in pretty much every colour in the colour spectrum including you've heard me talk about my sexy black one before just look at this this only comes out on special occasions that gorgeous black centura and also in metallic colours as well so you can get the metallic coppers and golds and silvers and things like that so there's a whole range of centura pearl the white ones being sort of the core product but you know you can get purple you can get dark chocolate you can get the royal blues but all sorts of as i say pretty much any colour you can think of we make that centura pearl in and it behaves exactly the same as the white it will take the ink the same as what i've just done on the white so so versatile really is absolutely i think my favorite combinations at the moment are chocolate and mink chocolate together. and, chocolate ooh, and that's mink nice. look lovely. but i love the one we call pumpkin it's a really yep. nice orange it's not too yep. orange and it goes with so many of the paper pads say it with flowers sunflowers all work beautifully yeah. with the pumpkin absolutely one gorgeous. of my favorites is the pacific it's like a teal Colour. Oh, I haven't got that one. That's that's a really nice one. Yeah, I like I like that teal blue shade. Yes. As you may have gathered with the inks, but <laughs> uh, that comes a close second to the pinks. But yeah, it's called Pacific. Yeah. And uh, really, really nice shade of sort of turquoisey blue. But I can say there's such a you know a whole rainbow of colours in it. I know yeah. when we used to work in the store, I used to like them all in rainbow order, and Did they used you? to go mad because my OCD said that it had to start yellow into orange into red into yeah. They're like Jan, what are you doing? I said it just looks pretty. Yeah. Leave me alone. I'm yeah. happy. You know, yeah. moving them all around on the pegs. Craft, craft products have a purpose, they yeah. have a function, but they can also look very, very pretty they too. They sure do. Absolutely. Now, Lillian's got a question. Uh -huh. I know I, I'd answer, but I'll, I'll let you answer it first. Question for the experts. I made a roll-up treat box using craft card. But that would look lovely. I used Velcro dots as closures, but when I tried to open them, they would just tear off the card. I think it was the fibrousness fibrousness of the card yeah the dots couldn't stick properly any suggestions would be welcome yep. a little bit if you have our tacky glue let me just find my bottle in my depths of my bag there if you have our tacky glue which is a, a pva glue water-based mm -hmm. pva glue little bit of that onto the back of your glue uh, your little velcro glue dot and this will soak into the fibers of the card and give you a better adhesion with them mm -hmm. because obviously when you're pulling them apart there's a certain amount of tension on both the velcro and the card stock but this will fasten metal onto card it will fasten wood onto card as i say just a little dot of it behind allows it to sort of adhere the velcro dot but that wet glue will soak into the card and give you a really yeah. good contact that yeah. was exactly what i was going to say exactly yeah. the tacky glue as jan said tacky glue will stick metal it will stick glass yeah. it'll stick gems to your cardstock so it's it'll be perfect but put it on and then leave it the most important thing is that you leave it to really really cure because i think that is absolutely key oh so eve b says that yeah, that is so yummy lovely pretty luscious i think she's mm. the fan of cardstock she was oh was it the two colors the chocolate and the mock i'm not sure um coletta cooper says i love centura pearl colors i have the sexy black very oh, cool i love the sexy black is that what it's called sexy no black? it's just called black it's oh. me that calls it i just think it is very sexy yeah it, it is it's and it comes out on special occasions it does, does. It? yeah yeah you've got it you you, you yeah, know there's, there's a time to use matte black card and there's a time for sexy black centura pearl okay yeah. So yeah. you know, you know how far world, you anyway. are at the pecking order. If you've got matte black or whether you've got centura black. That's the one, yeah. Okay. <laughs> so Jan, if I said to you, she didn't know I'm going to ask this. Mm. If I said to you, Desert Island, you could only take one cardstock. Oh gosh, that's a hard one, isn't it? I think as much as I love my craft card, I think it would have to be the multi-purpose. Purely because you can do more than yes. one thing with it, yeah. Yeah. I think that would be what I would say. Yeah. Yes. This is your multi-purpose. So this is your 300 GSM. And I know it's not available today, but it will be very it's soon. It's on its way. You can yeah. get it in the A4 and the A3. And as Jan showed you, if you look back at our 11 a.m. show this morning, having it in the A3 means that if you're maybe doing um, a stepper card you can cut a long piece if you're doing a box you can do the lid and the base in one without having to join just gives you so much more if you're doing constructions and things like that having in the A3 is amazing 
But again, the Centura Pearl comes in A3, doesn't it? The it does. Snow White it and does, yes. So, just just yeah. popping back to that, Corin. Sorry to interrupt no, you. The yeah. A3 multipurpose. Mm. We did have a question on that, which I'm not sure whether we answered oh, properly this we morning. Did. That didn't was this we? morning, and it was what if you've got the US one, the US version of Or it was if you haven't got the A3, I think. Can you still make the ah, box that I made? That yes. Right, so I yes. made the little pizza box this morning out of a piece of the A3. And it means you can make it. This is all out of one piece of cardstock i think it measured about 14 and a half inches in total by about uh, 11 and something across um, and it's literally all made out of the one piece which makes it a little bit more sort of um, strong because you're not sticking anything together in the past without the a3 we've had to make what we call deconstructed boxes so somewhere it has to be joined together and the answer and forgive me because i can't remember the lady's name but she asked it i'm sure she asked if you could make it if you didn't have the a3 and what you would do is actually cut the two pieces of the box separately and whereas you've got this one and a quarter inch in my case here I would add this to this side of the box and I would also add it to this side of the box so you'd have two layers of this which would then overlap and stick together on the back to form the hinge if you wanted to make the box that opened like those pizza boxes I hope that makes sense so it's a case of whereas I've got my one and a quarter inch depth on this side and I've got it on this side the base has actually got the one and a quarter inch depth here but this is the same piece that goes for the top mm. so if you were making them separate you'd need the base to have a one, one and a quarter, quarter inch piece and then just overlap them at the back so that this piece in the back here was actually double strength and yeah. overlapped so yeah. yeah you can make it out of the smaller pieces um, it, it just depends what size. And as yeah. I say, by having that A3, it just opens up. The other thing with the A3 as well is that you can make a true six by six card, thank goodness. Because the A4, you can only get up to like five and seven eighths square. And that really bugs it, me. Do you it really area? bugs me that, why did they make it 12 inches wide? Yeah. Instead of that 11 and three quarters and a bit, you know, it's like make it 12 inches, yeah. So the, the A3 allows you to make that six inch square That's without I any trouble. I love 12 by 12 card stuff because you can just go straight, oh, down, straight the middle, down the middle. Yeah. Two, uh, two six by six yeah. card bases. I'll say whoever invented the A4 size here in the UK. I mean, that was way before crafting, oh, wasn't it? Yeah, but yes, I'm not sure yeah. what was going on there. And that's why we do the two scoreboards as well, uh -huh. the um, Ultimate Pros, one with the, for the US letter size and one for the U yep. UK A4 um, pet cards. So depending on what card stock you use, it dictates which one you would be using. Right, well, I think that's more or less all of our questions gone. Lillian says thank you. That was a question about the the dots, the the dots, Velcro dots. Velcro dots. Yep, dots. Absolutely, so, yeah. yeah. So we have one more show left today between with me, myself, and Jan. Because I don't know who's on tomorrow. Does I think Debbie, is it Debbie here tomorrow? Craig and somebody. Craig and which Debbie? Debbie Fisher, Debbie, I think. Debbie Fisher, yes. there we go. Craig and Debbie Fisher tomorrow. So this is the last show with Jan and myself. We'll be at 6 p.m., 1 p.m. Eastern time. So I hope you can join us. So did you say Creative Cravings? Is that one? Creative Cravings. And that is all about your tools, Those your essential, essential tools. tools. So if you're just starting your crafting journey, these would be the things that I would recommend to get you started the things you see us demonstrating the, the kind of things you know your scissors your tweezers your tape pens your bone folders things like that the stuff that i have out all the time and i'm but sure we, you're exactly the same when you're crafting but we don't Karin. have time to explain why we're using yeah. them what the benefits are so we'll hopefully we'll be able to go through quite a few of those and let you have a look at why we think they're the key tool so a bit like the desert island 101 one i did a couple of weeks back but this is jan's take on her essential tool so hopefully you can join us back at 6 p.m. or as I said 1 p.m. Eastern time the last show today and uh, then yet yeah, tomorrow will be Craig and our Debbie Fisher and they have got some fantastic shows tomorrow including our second chance Sunday I think that's going to be busy because there is an awful lot of stuff out there ready Jake's for been that. beavering away Jake hasn't he on morning so so busy <laughs> just keeps seeing his head pop up I know if you have any more questions about the card stock then drop it through to Jan or myself and we will try to answer them I know we've had to rush through and um, our Chloe's been trying to keep up with all of the comments and make sure she passes them through but if we've missed any questions come back to us and we will answer them and we will explain to you what we how we think you're going to get the best out of your cardstock so until six o'clock so a couple of couple of three hours 
please come back and join us and uh, we look forward to um, taking you through Jan's favourite essential tools. <laughs>